All right, today we're gonna to talk chemistry, a little bit of eighth grade science. And we're gonna talk water heaters once again. Uh, this is a pretty important subject because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I'm gonna to try to go over just the basics of electrolysis, how you combat that, and how we can just apply that to plumbing. All right, just the other day, I removed an old water heater for a customer and installed a new tank water heater. The customer asked for a tank that had a removable, replaceable anode rod. Now, if you don't know what an anode rod is, let's go over that quick, and then we're gonna talk about why that customer wanted it done. So here's actually the anode rod from that customer's water heater. So this is a magnesium alloy rod. It's a solid rod. It's pretty big, probably three quarters inch in diameter. And it's got a pipe thread connection on the end of it. Now what this does is important. This is inserted down into the water heater. It comes installed on a new water heater tank. And this anode is, this magnesium is a more noble metal than the steel tank that it's installed in. Why that's important is this. When you have two dissimilar metals, when you have two dissimilar metals, current, electrical current, is actually gonna flow from one to the other, all right? The more noble metal is gonna take the beating, it's gonna take the corrosion and take the current away from the other, and it's gonna allow the corrosion on that more noble metal. Magnesium, which is, what this rod was made out of, is a more noble metal than that steel. So the, any corrosion, because of dissimilar metals, is gonna happen on this rod. That's important, it's sacrificial, okay? So this rod, the manufacturer inserts it into the tank. It was a 40 gallon gas water heater, about this size actually. It's inserted into that tank, and that rod is actually, uh, estimated to last about three to five years by the manufacturer, okay? It is replaceable, and that where, that's where we get back to that customer of mine when they wanted a new water heater. I said, why would you want a replaceable anode rod? And he says, well, we have rotten egg smell in our hot water, all right? So we tested the water just to make sure that they didn't have sulfur bacteria in both the cold and the hot water, and it wasn't the case. That sulfur bacteria is activated inside that tank and that bacteria reacts with that magnesium anode rod causing that hydrogen sulfide gas, that really terrible rotten egg smell. So it was very important to the customer that we could remove that magnesium rod and replace it with actually a power electrified anode rod. Now this is a totally different product altogether from that magnesium rod. I'm gonna pull it out of the box here. I buy these from my supplier, you can buy them online. They're fairly common. They're pretty cool though. So this is the entire anode rod right here, okay? So look at that, there's quite a difference altogether. This metal right here, this is metal, it's made, it's titanium, and it has um, some kind of proprietary coating on it of different types of metal. Uh, these manufacturers don't tell you what that is, that coating, but I do know that this rod right here, this little L bracket kind of metal, is titanium, okay? This is a stainless steel fitting, three quarter inch pipe thread, just like the, magnet or the magnesium rod, and it has this plastic, um, tubing right here that's important in shielding the current from these two metals i guess i'm not i don't fully understand what that plastic does but it's not less important than overall this is the entire rod and, it, and there's a little 24 volt i think it's 24 volt let's take a look at that yep 24 volt fi, uh, 50 milliamp uh, transformer and that just plugs into the top of that so you can see very basic there's just two plugs there's a plug that will plug in there spade connection and then there's a grounding wire that you do want to attach to like the top of the tank uh, you find a screw or you screw in a new screw but uh, nonetheless if you want to see another, you want to see an installation video of mine, go check out my Instagram. I did a, I posted a video of me installing one of these recently on Instagram. So, uh, cool product, but let's just take a look at, like, this is an old tank here. Replaced this one recently. 
Uh, it has the anode rod intact there. I haven't taken it out. I don't know what it looks like, but uh, I'm just gonna show you uh, typically, a typical tool for this process would be this breaker bar. Um, now I'm probably not going to be able to get this old rod out of the tank, this, if the rod is even intact, I don't know. But of course the plug is there. I'm probably not going to be able to get this out of there using the breaker just because it's not full of water, the tank's not very heavy. Let me just kind of position on there. It's a 1 and 1 16th. I got it to turn a little bit. I do have a better tool for the job though. <laughs> and that's just my cordless impact wrench here. Uh, like I said, one and a 16th socket, put that on there. They're pretty, they're standard size. So you should be able to use the same socket on every tank. There we go. <laughs> Whoa. Well, the rod is completely gone. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised, it's a really old tank. Um, there you go, that sacrificial rod has done its job. It's dissolved from this to just that. That is it. That's actually not surprising. Uh, more often than not, we see this on the really old ones. People will start to complain about the smell of their water uh, if they've got well water and they've got that hydrogen or that sulfide bacteria present. There you go, that's completely gone. Got another water heater here, the one that we cut open in a previous video a long time ago. Chris, can you get in here and show that? This is the old uh, anode there. I do have an impact wrench I can pull that out with. Uh, it is a little bigger, I think. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need the bigger one for this tank. Let's see here. Isn't this fun? I think it's fun. All right, you ready? Ah, there it is. I love it. I love it. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, it's even cooler out of the tank, right? My buddy Steve Bazak, the architect, loves it when I cut apart and mess with water heaters. It's like his favorite thing. Go check out his videos. He's on the Build Show Network. All right, so that's that magnesium uh, anode rod all corroded and doing its job, sacrificing itself and protecting that tank. So that's what happens. They just start to dissolve and go away. There's corrosion, uh, basically kind of like rust uh, inside the tank of water. And um, that's what's happening to it over time. Now there is an alternative aside from magnesium and a powered anode rod, and that would be an aluminum anode rod. Now an aluminum rod is supposedly supposed to be better with the sulfide bacteria in well water and hard water situations. Uh, I have installed or swapped uh, the mag magnesium rod for an aluminum rod before and I've got mixed reviews for my customers so I've just stopped that altogether and gone with the power anode rod. Uh, now this real quick, this isn't a commercial for this brand. Oh, however, um, I'm not hiding it. I think it's a great brand. They aren't sponsoring this video. This kit here is going to cost right around between like $125 and $150. Uh, I think you can even buy them on Amazon. I buy them from one of my suppliers here locally, but uh, very simple, very basic. You just need to be able to plug this in. And I think it's got like a 12 foot cord or something like that. Now, Couple things. The anode rod is protecting the tank, right, from the corrosion. A powered anode rod uh, will also protect against lime scale. Uh, it won't eliminate it entirely, but that current running through that rod is going to keep, uh, it's going to cut down on the lime scale buildup. Um, one fact, though, that we have to cover, and I want I don't want to mislead anybody here. Uh, if you alter your tank water heater, if, you, if you've got a tank water heater that's under warranty, uh, replacing the existing factory supplied anode with a power anode rod, or if it was magnesium and you're switching to aluminum, you're going to want to check with the manufacturer because they might not, uh, they might not be 
happy with that situation. They probably have an approval process on what they want you to use on their tanks for warranty purposes, all right? So I'll just tell you straight up, uh, after years and years of doing this, uh, having done, dealt with anodes dozens of times over the years, I, I live and work in a very rural area. It's very common to uh, be installing or replacing uh, anode rods. I just educate my customers and I just tell them, look, you know, we can get rid of that, that rotten egg smell. We can put in a very simple device that's gonna outlast the original anode rod. Uh, this particular manufacturer puts a 20 year warranty on this. So in theory, it lasts 20 years. Uh, and so it should protect the tank well beyond the warranty period. Uh, I, do tell, I did tell my customer the other day when we put that new tank in, we put the power anode rod in by their request. I did very was upfront and in writing said, look, this is going to avoid the warranty for the, that particular water heater manufacturer. I know that because I've contacted them in the past, but they were more concerned about getting rid of the, uh, the rotten egg smell than they were any warranty coverage on their tank. They know that the tank is going to last longer than the warranty coverage itself. So they're going with the convenience and um, just getting rid of that rotten egg smell rather than worrying about the warranty. But just wanted to cover that up. Um, and this one's for Steve Bazak. Like I said a minute ago, he loves it when I'm messing with these water eaters. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, I think these um, powered anode rods are worth their weight in gold. People that deal with that rotten egg smell, uh, corrosion on their tanks, things like that, that's just, that's just a pain in the butt. Water eaters are more expensive than ever. This is a relatively inexpensive device. I think anybody can install it. If you have any confidence at all and the tools to do it, it's very simple. So thanks for watching my videos. Go over to my uh, Instagram, at Mechanical Hub. You can see me install one of these on that install that we're talking about just the other day. And you can see uh, other videos I'm posting every single day. I post here weekly on the Build Show Network. And you can find out you can see my videos, you can see other uh, contributors to the Build Show Network by subscribing to their weekly newsletter. So have a good one. Thanks.